Quartz crystal resonators are used in a huge number of different types of electronic circuit. They provide a really stable and accurate resonator for use in things like radio transmitters and receivers, where they're used in oscillators and filters, but they're also widely used as clock oscillators in things like computers and many other digital circuits. They're really cheap, but provide really excellent performance. So in this video, I'm going to tell you all about quartz crystal resonators and how they are, can be used in electronic circuits, what they are and how they work. We'll really take a, a deep, deep dive into those. These resonators are made from quartz crystals themselves. And here's an actual crystal of naturally occurring quartz. But for use in electronics, the crystals have to be very high grade and almost exclusively they're grown synthetically to provide the very high quality required. The way quartz resonators work revolves around the fact that the crystals exhibit the piezoelectric effect, the ability of a material to generate an electric potential when subject to stress, and it also works the other way around as well. As a result of the piezoelectric effect, the very sharp mechanical responses of the crystals are linked into the electrical circuit. Levels of Q, that's the quality factor of the tuned circuit, can be in excess of 20,000 and often as much as 100 or even 200,000. Levels of this order mean that quartz crystals are able to provide very high performance tuned circuits, giving very clean, stable and high accuracy signals when used in oscillator circuits and very sharp responses to reject unwanted signals when they're used in filters. What do these components actually look like? Well here we see a quartz crystal used on a computer board and here's another crystal used in a home-built low-power transmitter but they can be found in many other electronics items as well from domestic radios and televisions to high-end professional equipment of all sorts. The crystals themselves consist of a thin slice of quartz which is sandwiched between two electrodes that provide the electrical link to them. The quartz blanks are cut from larger crystals and then cut, lapped, etched and generally prepared to give the required performance. Quartz crystals have been used in electronics for very many years and here are some older crystals but more modern ones are much smaller and can have leads like this one or pins for a socket or they can be in much smaller surface mount formats as well. To understand what's inside of them let's take a look inside one of the older ones that we can get apart quite easily. So here we see the crystal that we're going to take apart quite easy to do, three screws in there. Just take it apart and drop the screws out. This one comes apart, make sure it's, it's running freely. That's it, that's out. And take this last one out that's actually only held in three positions and you see now that it all pops apart because it's spring loaded in there. The, uh, there's a, whoops, a rubber uh, seal there to keep uh, some of the moisture out, the, the spring there. And here we've got one of the contacts that goes down to the pins there and the two plates that the crystal itself is held between. So let's just ease that out and you can actually see the crystal um, blank or the crystal here I'm holding it you shouldn't actually really do that if you're going to use them for uh, high, <laughs> high quality things but this is really just for to show you so we'll pop that in there and that's our crystal how to take it apart and, and what's inside one. More modern crystals have much smaller crystals inside them as we see in this one that is contained within a glass envelope you can actually see the electrodes plated onto the crystal as well if you look carefully I can even cut into one of the more modern metal canned types as well and we see the same construction as in the glass envelope one. Modern crystals are contained in sealed cans or occasionally glass envelopes to prevent the atmosphere getting to them and degrading their performance. The circuit symbol for a quartz crystal resonator actually depicts the crystal itself being held within the two electrodes and you can see it here. Quartz crystals are very easy to use within electronic circuits and for an oscillator 
uh, it's possible to use them by simply replacing what might be a normal LC circuit by the crystal itself. And here's an example of a circuit that is very widely used. But quartz crystals can also be used in filter circuits. And this module is actually a complete crystal filter consisting of several crystals. Normally several crystals are used to give the required steep sides to the filter whilst also providing the required bandwidth for the signals to be received. It's worth taking a look at the equivalent circuit of a crystal to understand its operation a little bit better. It has several elements to it and it can be seen that there can be two resonant modes. One is the series resonant mode and the other is called the parallel resonant mode. These two resonant modes are generally just a few kilohertz apart or a few percent apart and when ordering them it's necessary to select which one is required. Also, when using the parallel resonant mode, a load capacitor value is needed. This is the value of the capacitance the crystal will see when it's operating in the circuit, and it will have an effect on the resonant frequency. It's the amount of circuit capacitance from the circuit that will act in parallel with the crystal. For example, figures of 30 picofarads or, or 50 picofarads are quite common, but there are other values as well. It's also worth noting that crystals can operate in an overtone mode. For frequencies up to about 30 MHz, the crystal blanks are of a manageable size and they're quite robust, but above this they can become quite thin and fragile, so they often use an overtone mode operating at 3, 5 or, or so on times the uh, fundamental frequency. Although with technology improving all the time, higher fundamental frequencies are often available. So that's our quick summary about quartz crystals and crystal oscillators and, and filters. If you need any more information, please head over to the description area where there's plenty more information there and also links to further web pages and the like where you can find more resources. Also, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.